hours of pain away from you if you do use 3CX. So obviously, from uh, from branding point of view, you may your customer may really want to use their own domain name, or maybe you want to do or use your own domain name so customer don't know, you know, uh, who's hosting it and vice versa. Hundred different reasons that could be. Uh, so uh, you could use obviously your own domain, but if you do use 3CX, you could use your you will be asked to choose uh, uh, a choice of hosting. Uh, again, as long as it's available and not chosen by someone else, um, and, prefer, uh, and you can you, you can choose a range of different uh, domain names. If you look at the uh, diagram here, if, uh, the picture in, in the slide, you can see uh, uh, it's got 3cx.co.uk, United Kingdom. But if you click on drop down, it, you also have the option to choose um, Irish domain or uh, American domain or vice versa, wherever 3 cx hosting. So you do have the option available. Uh, to, on, on that system. Uh, if the specific SQDN request is taken again, as I said, maybe ProView or um, NSS and vice versa, you can either use a new host name or select a different 3CX domain. So, for example, if ProView.3CX.co.uk is not available, you can use ProView.3CX.net and vice versa. So, this possibility of using that. Um, now, at some point, the installer will ask you to select uh, or choose the HTTP or HTTPS ports. Uh, you want to use and now the default one generally people don't tend to change it but the default ones are port 5000 now that port 5000 is only accessible via a local network or LAN um, and 5001 which is a default uh, um, uh, port for remote access also you can choose between port 80 and 443 instead and uh, again I'm, uh, I'm the, the three sex are using something called uh, and ending web server for three sex which is you know, very lightweight and it does things on the fly kind of thing. So this is assuming, of course, there's no other applications running on those ports. Uh, for example, if you're running an ISS, IISS server, then obviously you probably have to look at disabling that or maybe using a different port. In addition to the web ports, uh, you will also have to choose the SIP trunk, uh, SIP and, uh, and terminal ports of the PBX as well. Again, this is by default 5060 for uh, SIP and 5094 terminal. The terminal ports are used for bridging, for SBCs, uh, for 3CX applications, remote 3CX applications. So, actually, uh, it is quite important to have for these ports uh, allocated correctly as well. If you choose to use an external FQDN, create an, um, again, this is more like a Windows thing. I've not seen many people using it, but if you're installing it on Windows, some people do tend to use their internal FQDN as well as compared to an uh, external one. Uh, so they may, so if you do choose to use an external FQDN, create an A record on your local DNS server before starting the installation process. This must then point to the LAN IP address of the 3 server. Uh, then goes to the previous configuration until you get prompted when the option to use your own managed DNS server comes up. Now, at that stage of time, use the option to enter your local FQDN. Now, if you do want to use an internal FQDN, just use the local IP address option from that configuration. Now, contrary to, uh, contrary to the external FQDN, which is a mandatory, you having an extern, in internal FQDN is not always required. Uh, instead, you can just use the private IP address of 3CX server. Again, people who have their own internal DNS server or Windows administrators, they try to do things in a bit of fancy way. They, they can, instead of knowing, remembering the IP address of the internal IP address of 3CX, they can just use up 3CX.local or 3CX.provi.co.uk, vice versa. Uh, so, um, it is an optional thing, but you can always access it on the local IP address of 36 as well. Uh, you will, however, as I said, need an internal FQDN if you want to have a split DNS configuration. Uh, and again, this is mainly used for HA for configuring a fair uh, solution. Uh, and in this case, you will have to provide your own certificates during installation, and you must use a static IP address, public IP address as well. Um, as well as local DNS and DHCP server, which you can configure as well. So the next stage, uh, next page, where it will prompt you for choosing uh, an extension, uh, Digitland. Now this is a very important decision because you probably once you've made the decision on how long the extension needs to be, uh, you need to make sure uh, uh, it is. It is. You look at the growth of the company. If you chose a two-digit length, then obviously the maximum number of extensions you can have is about 99 to 100. 
But if you are growing, obviously, substantially, then obviously you can't really just change the, the extension length. Uh, you will have to probably do redo the whole installation um, of it from scratch to change the extension length. So it's a, it is very important uh, to choose the right extension. And generally, I tend to be, you know, three digit is generally a, a secure um, and, you know, secure way of doing that anyways. But people do tend to use four digits or five digits, if, depending on how big the system is. Also, uh, again, a backup and restore. If you do plan to do a backup and restore, it will only restore the previous extension digit length. So always factor in the growth uh, when selecting the extension. And again, as I said, if you don't, if you don't look at the, the future, then obviously you are looking at reconfiguring the whole PBS from scratch. So. Uh, 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 in, the, in the same process, an email address is required to which the system will send important notifications like uh, system update information, backup, restore, uh, various system alerts can be effectively chosen. Again, this is something you can choose when you're creating the extensions. Uh, so which kind of, what kind of information you do is a checkbox effectively available on 3.6 uh, dashboard. Also, you'll be asked to fill in your uh, fill in the SMTP server information, which 3CX we use to dispatch emails. Now, generally, you can use 3CX's on um, uh, SMTP server uh, uh, to send reports, welcome emails, faxes, voicemails, notification emails, and vice versa. Uh, I will tend, I will probably today use that in uh, 3CX's on SMTP server because just it's easier. But if you do want to use your own SMTP server or your customer's SMTP server, uh, you can add your configuration at a later stage from the dashboard as well. Which basically means, you know, when you, when you receive an email, there's a form header which says uh, Mohammed Krobi.co.uk, for example. So when 36 sends an email, it will have something called uh, um, um, admin at 36.co.uk. So the form header will come from 36 as compared to uh, as compared to your own email address, effectively, that makes sense. So you probably want to think about uh, configuring your own SMTP server details on 3CX. Uh, but if you're not bothered, you know, probably just keep using 3CX as well. But again, as I said, if you want to personalize that, uh, that information, so you know when a user receives information like welcome email or faxes or voicemails, uh, missed call notifications, then probably worth looking at configuring an external or your own SMTP server address as well. Then you will be prompted for uh, selecting um, um, a country. Uh, now the country is important because it factory sets the voicemail. Uh, it sets the voicemail number accordingly. Um, 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 this will not affect the reports and time scheduling um, automation. Um, effectively, um, but because it uses the system time, uh, but effectively. Uh, it is important to make. Uh, it is important from the E one six four format point of view. Um, this the voicemail number is also you know again as I said it's sets according to the country. The default voice number number is nine nine nine, which is obviously an, an emergency number uh, in some 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 some, some countries. Uh, but if a country uses this number as an emergency number, the voicemail number is set to six six six. So there are two different numbers, actually depending on which country you're based. Uh, but if you select the UK. It will be set to default to 666 uh, and for Singapore this is the same number as well. Uh, time zone uh, you will be also be prompted to uh, enter the default time zone as well. Uh, now uh, in Windows uh, it uses the systems time but however in Linux version the system time will also be set at an operating system level so making it a lot easier to manage the server time. Um, so with the Windows edition as I said you would have to need to set the Windows Host server address manually if there's no NTP server set. Find the last step in is a license activation of 3CX. If the license key is new and hasn't been registered before, the license details will be required at this stage. And if you, if you are a 3CX reseller uh, and there is a, on the installation there is a reseller ID you have to enter, uh, which is generally tend to be a six digit number uh, to assign the, this key to your partner portal. Uh, now, if this information is already present, obviously the PBX will automatically activate while skipping this step. But it is important if you if you if it's a new uh, 
uh, new installation, make sure to remember to add your partner ID because that is good. That if you do once you've done that, the, the right um, credits or uh, revenue uh, is allocated to your account or reseller account because the way 36 works is or the partner portal works is you have to spend so much money with 36 in a year to keep on uh, upgrading or moving to a different new level of uh, uh, partner status effectively so they have bronze silver platinum titanium and also different licenses so i'm not going to cover that obviously anyways but it is important if you are a reseller make sure you add your reseller id uh, during the installation process and once you, you know, once it is activated, uh, you will now see login uh, and access to the uh, management console. Uh, and effectively, you are now ready to use uh, the PBX. So that's about it from the installation process. Now I'm going to quickly go through the demonstration um, of it and then also look at some of the questions uh, I have as well. So let's, uh, let's quickly look at the demonstration. So I'm just going to pause my screen for a second while I'm taking screen. I'll switch a spare beam on second place. One second, I'm just trying to figure out the screen. To, to so now you should be able to see my screen. I've already um, installed, downloaded the 3CX uh, phone system application uh, on my PC. So it's pretty much straightforward. Double click on it. If it works. Uh, it's prompted me on the file settings and now sorry it's gone into my different screens so just bear with me a second i'm just moving that over to the new screen date so effectively on a windows machine it says 36 requirements click next click next uh, accept uh, installation directly you can choose a different one install and and that's pretty much it that's going to take some time so while it's configuring uh, the phone system i'm just going to quickly have a look at some of the questions that have been asked so please bear with me uh, there's a question about what is SC. Uh, it means number of simultaneous calls. Simultaneous calls. Uh, how about installing updates before installing on Linux? Again, I've covered that in a bit detail, but basically, uh, when you do download the ISO from uh, 3CX, um, it, the updates are part of the installation process. So it will update the three, uh, operating system before it installs 3CX PPX. Uh, there's a question about um, Azure or OWS instance is fine, but do you find work well with the minimum specs for the best basic installation? So there's a requirement, obviously, there's a question more about which uh, platform is better to use. Now, that's a trick question because obviously I not, uh, I'm not an expert on cloud computing. Uh, effectively, from, again, this is my experience with talking to customers, some people prefer the AWS, uh, again, because they're used to where they, they, they have other applications running on it. Uh, and there's a lot of different things like Route 53 for, you know, um, for failover and all sorts of different things. Um, so it really, really depends. I have Microsoft partners who prefer Azure because they know how to use it, how to play up, get around it. Whereas other people who prefer Amazon, they just use Amazon. So there's no, there's no easy way. If you're looking for something cheap and cheerful uh, kind of system, then probably look at something called Amazon Light Sale. It seems the prices on Light Sale have come down quite drastically in the recent years. Uh, and that's, we have a couple of resellers using Light Sale to, all, to install uh, mini, uh, you know, like a um, mini kind of PBXs for 10 users, 20 users, and it seems to be cost effective and it seems to do this job. Right. Um, the question about what is the hotel under Pro Key? So, hotel. Uh, is there's an add-on which allows you to integrate with uh, the PMS, what 36 call a PMS system, which is property management systems. So a lot of hotels have, you know, uh, integrated systems in place to 
to get for the guest check-ins, guest check-outs, and vice versa. So you can install 36 PBX on in a hotel integrated with their PMS system. There's a list of premium supported PMS systems on uh, 36 website as well. And what it allows you to do is integrate your um, the PMS system with the PBX. What it means is. You can do like um, a wake. You can set up like wake up calls. Um, you can do something like uh, cleaning, uh, uh, kind of uh, set up cleaning times for the for the rooms and vice versa. And it for, puts the phone in mates mates um, um, mates data section and vice versa. So there's uh, there's bits and bobs available in hotel management section of it as well. So now the installation has process has gone through. Uh, I think that's the only questions I have. So once it asks me. The installation asked me whether you uh, should be using a web browser or from command line. I'm not going to be fancy, so I'm just going to use a web browser to complete my uh, uh, installation process. So now we're starting the web configuration tool. While it's doing that, I'm just going to bring the process in front of me. And then eventually, so uh, now you can see it's asking me for um, installation key. Um, I'm just waiting for my installation key to load, so just bear with me one second. So the installation key I'm going to be using uh, is a, a standard license. So effectively, you put your installation key. It asks your username and password. I'm just going to use admin. Repeat the password. Office oh, correct. Yeah, okay. So uh, I am behind that, so it is my home network. As I said, I don't have a public IP. Well, I do have a public IP address, but not static. So uh, it automatically detects the, the public IP address. That is correct, so I'm just going to click next. It's not static, unfortunately, so I'm going to select dynamic here. Uh, um, select the subdomain, so I'm just going to use Europe, UK, if I can find somewhere. United Kingdom, and I'm going to do a demo install. So my effectively my FQDN will become demo install dot three cx dot uk. It's pretty much easier that way. So I'm just going to use that ports level. I'm not going to change any of those ports uh, just because it's easier. But again, at this stage, this is the time. If you want to change the ports, you should probably really change the ports. Some of the ports are not effectively uh, changeable, but these two ports are definitely you can change them at a later stage as well. So select next. Uh, and to the default network IP address, I do have a loopback, but again, it's only the IP address. Uh, you can enter your own, you know, FQDN. Again, this is the step I was talking about. If you do have your split, split DNS, if you want to configure uh, failovers and vice versa, you probably want to use the local FQDN. But I don't have it, so I'm just going to use the local IP address. Next. And now this is the time consuming element. So now it's trying to create FQDNs, certificates, importing them to the PBX, getting them all up and running. Uh, in the background, once that have finalized, now that can take sometimes takes about you know five to uh, five to ten minutes. Sometimes can sometimes it can be quicker depending on how quickly my system handles it. So once it's done it, uh, I will have the dashboard. Uh, oh great! Okay, so uh, I have to use a different um, FQDN. So I'm just going to use uh, ProView Training. So ProView Training. So that was a good uh, experience, experts, experience effectively, because it's, uh, it's obviously the, 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 the subdomain I was using was already in use. So it, it prompts you for that kind of information available. So now that can take about five, 10 minutes. So I'm going to uh, leave it here running. And then let's move on to the next, um, um, the next, oh no, sorry, apologies for that. I'm just going to. Because I've run so many training courses, I've, I've forgotten how many I'm using. So just bear one second, let me try a different one. So yeah, let's move on to the next um, ne uh, next module, which effectively talks about the uh, the firewall um, configuration element of it. Uh, now that is a bit of dry subject if you're not technical uh, uh, person.